Okay, we're going to look at factoring this binomial, and this one is using a different method. This is called the bearing method. Okay, now, in this method, we are still, the very first step that we're going to use here is we're going to multiply A times C. Okay, so we've got to identify what our A, B, and C are in this case. A is always this first one in front of the quadratic term, in front of the squared term. B is our middle one, our linear term. It's the one with, uh, right in front of the variable. And C is always our constant term that has no variable on it. So we're going to multiply A times C, which will give us 40. Okay. Well, now, that, now that we know that A times C gives us 40, we've got to figure out what two numbers multiply together to give us 40, but add together to give us negative 13. So we've got to sit there and think about that for a second. They multiply together to give us a positive number and add together to give us a negative number. That means they're both going to be negative, so our factors of 40 would be negative 8 and negative 5. Negative 8, negative 5. Those are our two factors. Now, with this method, we're going to do something just a little bit different. We need to factor it into two binomials, so we know it's going to look something like this. Now, I'm going to do something that's a little bit weird at first. Um, for the math nuts like myself, it's, it's really weird. But bear with me just for a moment. I'm going to write in here that the first term is 4p and 4p. Now, we know inherently that this is wrong, because 4p times 4p would give us 16p squared, and we're looking for something with 4p squared. So that's why it's a little bit odd, because we know automatically that that's the wrong one, but it's just a step in the process, if you will. Okay, so I put 4p into both of them, and the reason why I put 4p, it's whatever this first term is right here, so 4p into both of them. Now, I have a negative 8 and a negative 5. Now, what I'm going to do is just write those in, negative 8 negative 5, and it does not matter what order you put those in. Okay, now that I've got this, it, it, if I were to FOIL this one out, it would not give me this, okay? But what we're going to have to do is one last step, which is to factor out any common factors. So I've got to look at this one. Is there a common number that goes into both of those two here? And I find out that yes, indeed, it's 4. So if I were to divide this one by 4, that would give me a new binomial, of p minus 2. Okay, Now, then I look at this one. Do they share a common factor? In this case, they do not. And so I'm just going to simply write that down. 4p minus 5. As weird as it sounds, this is your answer. I forgot a parenthesis there. If we were to FOIL these through, p times 4p would give me my 4p squared. Okay. Uh, and if we go through each and every step, it would bring us back to this original equation, or the original expression here. So it's a little bit different only because you have this 4p that you write in automatically, and then you divide out this common factor. And this common factor just disappears essentially with this particular method, okay? But the big, the big thing is at the end, you want to always foil this back to make sure you get your original problem here.